Hello and welcome to my Portuguese Grand Prix driver predictions post race. The race just finished about 45 minutes ago and I've just finished piecing together all of my overall rankings. This is the series in which I would like you guys to get involved with. So following the link in the description down below, you can fill out your uh, driver rankings for each of the 20 drivers today. 20 is the best score that you can give them and then 1 is the worst score that can give that you can give them. I would like you to consider qualifying and also the race. Obviously you can then decide uh, on your own mind exactly how much weighting you want to give the race result versus qualifying, but please consider both of these events. The aim of which I will then compare my results and my rankings to your guys' rankings and then also to my data-derived algorithm rankings in a video that will come out in a couple of days' time once I've crunched all of the race numbers. And also in today's episode, I'll be revealing the predictions scores as well from the video that was released on Thursday. And I will tell you now, someone has absolutely smashed it. They have almost been spot on. The biggest score that we've seen so far in this series. But without further ado, we will take a look at the Portugal GP drivers rankings. And we start at first with the drivers championship. It was Lewis Hamilton who came away with that Grand Prix victory with Max Verstappen in P2. Valtteri Bottas picking up the extra bonus point after Verstappen's lap time was deleted by going wide at turn 14. So there is still an eight point deficit at the top of the championship with Norris still actually P3. And then just taking a brief look at the Constructors Championship, Mercedes are the first team to breach 100 points with Red Bull just 18 behind. Definitely Red Bull's most competitive season so far within the hybrid era. McLaren on 53, just 11 clear of Ferrari. And from here, we will take a look at the prediction scores for the Portuguese Grand Prix. It is Aaron from the Five Red Lights channel who takes the victory in Portugal, scoring 19 total points. He got each one of the top five in the race correct. Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas, Bot Perez, and then Norris as well as getting his bold statement of five lap times being deleted in qualifying, and then he just scored four points in qualifying. A very, very strong performance, and like I said, the highest point score we have seen so far, which means putting all of the results from the three races together, we get this order here. I've received 49 individual responses to this survey. This is absolutely awesome stuff. We've got Evan Darcy leading the way on 44 points from Aaron from the Five Red Lights channel, just one point behind a little bit in front of Joe Bishow and then also Mitch as well in P4. A Doctor Who channel not too far behind, just ahead of Matej Sibi. Tushar Singh who loses his lead from the Imola Grand Prix as well. Then Hal just in front of myself. We're in a close little battle there, just two points in it between us. And if you would like to get involved in those predictions uh, videos, I release my predictions on Thursday, from which you can follow the link that is in the description of those videos to submit your predictions. So please don't feel like you're left out. You can get involved next time in Spain when that video releases on Thursday. But now we will get on into the driver rankings of today's Portuguese Grand Prix. And like I said, there is that link in the top line of today's description where you can fill out your driver rankings and I'll then average all of those out as an audience score in a couple of days time. But we will jump on into Lewis Hamilton first. The Grand Prix victor, I've given him 18 out of 20. He really couldn't have done much better unless he'd have got pole position uh, in qualifying. That's the only reason why he hasn't really got a higher score than 18. A stellar race performance from Lewis Hamilton. And then we head to his teammate Valtteri Bottas, 14. It was his race to lose, starting from pole position. Such a strong qualifying from Valtteri Bottas, which is why his score is so high, but the race unfortunately slightly pulled that down. He definitely had pace, 100% had pace, especially in that first portion of the race until he lost the position to Hamilton, and he was keeping Verstappen behind until the pit stop phase, but then he had that small little engine issue and then just dropped back from there. Was able to pick up the fastest lap only after Verstappen's deleted time, but still, not, a, not an ideal race for Valtteri Bottas. It was just that little engine issue that cost him some time. And from Valtteri Bottas, we take a look at Max Verstappen. 
17. Again, it's qualifying that really pulls this score down, as it was his pole position to lose, and he lost it. Even with a mistake in turn 4, he was still on track for an 18-2 on the lap time that got deleted. But in the end, he didn't get it, and he started P3, and second was ultimately the best he could do. He challenged a little bit, but I feel second was the most that he could achieve, so 17 out of 20 is his score. And then heading to his teammate, Sergio Perez, 13 out of 20. Um... Yeah, qualifying was good. Race was... Eh? I, I don't understand the ridiculously long first stints. I, I don't know why it's a strategy, really. They were kind of hoping for a safety car, but... It, if, if there wasn't a safety car, you're just buggering over Perez. Yes, he had mammoths of time backwards to him to P5, but you're sacrificing him moving forwards, and I don't really understand fully why but ultimately he didn't quite have the pace even when he was behind he wasn't closing the gap and he was still falling back after losing the place to signs off of the start so 13 out of 20 is Perez's score and from Sergio Perez we take a look at Daniel Ricciardo 14 out of 20 honestly a strong race after getting knocked out in Q1 so perhaps he should have really got a 13 out of 20 for that little uh little blip in his performance there but honestly a very strong race at one point running p5 going deep into the grand prix before pitting and he ended up in p9 not bad and to his teammate mr lando norris this guy is having the season of his life he is still currently p3 in the driver's standings that is mega and 16 out of 20 is his score some very very nice driving and then from lando norris we take a look at sebastian vettel 10 out of 20 qualifying pulls this score up as he managed to get into Q3, finally showing some sort of the Sebastian Vettel pace that we have missed for so many years. But the race was a little bit of a letdown. I'm not sure whether the car just isn't really performing very well, but it wasn't a very decent race for Sebastian. So 10 out of 20 is his score. And then to Vettel's teammate, Lance Stroll, 8. Uh, knocked out in Q1 and then just didn't progress forward in the race. Uh, didn't really see anything much from him at all, so 8 out of 20 is the score for Lance Stroll. And from the Canadian, we then take a look at Fernando Alonso. 13 out of 20, a stellar, a stellar Grand Prix from Fernando Alonso. The only reason why this isn't a 14 or a 15 is that small little qualifying blip. Not managing to get through to Q3 like his teammate, and he even said in post-race interviews he wasn't quite sure why, or he wasn't quite sure where that little blip came from. But 13 out of 20 is a very respectable score for Fernando Alonso. But to his teammate Esteban Ocon, I've given 10. In hindsight, I thought this was a little bit higher, but yes, 10 out of 20 for Esteban Ocon. I do feel this is actually a touch on the harsh side, simply because he did actually score points, and I am going to change this score. I'm going to do a radical maneuver, and I'm going to change this score to 14 out of 20. There we go, that is better for Esteban Ocon, 14 out of 20, a mega qualifying and still some points for Alpine, a very, very good weekend. 14 out of 20 for Esteban Ocon. And from Ocon, we then jump on in to Ferrari, and Charles Leclerc gets a 15. A decent qualifying, and a very good race. They did kind of lack a little bit of pace, but ultimately it was a decent race, and a decent performance from Charles Leclerc. 15 out of 20. However, his teammate Carlos Sainz, he gets a 10. A cracking, a cracking qualifying from Carlos Sainz. But the race... No pace, none, zilch, nada, nothing, outside of the points, a shame, a very big shame, and the reason why he has got 10 out of 20. And then from signs, we take a look at Pierre Gasly, 11, a good qualifying and an eh race. The, the car doesn't really seem to have the pace that it had in Bahrain, which is a little bit of a shame. As I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from Pierre Gasly, I believe there was some uh, couple battles with the Alpines and the maybe Ferraris, etc. Maybe an Aston Martin or something like that that we occasionally cut to, but other than that, that was about it. And then to his teammate Yuki Tsunoda, nine. Again, just not a very, not a very good 
race. Not a very good weekend for Yuki Tsunoda. So 9 out of 20 is his score. I believe he did actually make a small little mistake at one point during the race, especially when Bottas was trying to get back past or, or lap or something along those lines. I can't remember the exact specifics, but I think he did make a small little mistake. Uh, so 9 out of 20 is the score for Yuki Tsunoda. And then moving into Alpha Romeo, Kimi Raikkonen, I've just given an 8 out of 20, mainly because of the qualifying, uh, getting into Q2, and then being, I think, what, P14 or something like that. The race, we'll never know how well it would have gone as he dinked into his teammate Antonio Giovinazzi. So 8 out of 20 for Kimi Raikkonen, but I feel that, again, it's a little bit on the high side. But his teammate Antonio Giovinazzi gets a 12, a very respectable qualifying in P12, and then bringing it home in P12. So not bad in the slightest. It would have been good if he managed to move forward a couple of places, but ultimately not that bad. Survived that small little contact with Kimi Raikkonen and ended up finishing the race. So a very, very decent Grand Prix, 12 out of 20. And then we move on into the Haas pair. And first we look at Mick Schumacher, 13 out of 20, a very, very, very good Grand Prix. The Haas car is still crap and still a bit rubbish, but Mick actually put in a very good performance. Managed to get past Latifi, forced him into an error in the last couple of laps of the GP. So 13 out of 20 is the German score. However, Mr. Nikita Eggbrain, 4 out of 20. Qualifying, shocking. His pace throughout all of the single lap events, shocking. And then in the race, I think he ended up over a minute behind uh, his teammate Mick Schumacher. He uh, got that penalty for blue flags as well. I think he had five or six different blue flags waved at him. He just completely blocked Sergio Perez as well. At first, when I, I glimpsed it, I thought, oh, that's not too bad. He's just not really getting out of the way. But no, he just didn't move. He just didn't move off of the racing line going into turn three slash four, uh, that sort of complex. So a fully deserved penalty for Nikita Mazepin. Uh, I'm aware that he made a couple extra pit stops, which is why he was a minute behind, but still his pace was nowhere. And then from Mazepin, we take a look at George Russell, and I've given him 11 out of 20. Qualifying again boosts this score, but the race pace was nowhere, much like Carlos Sainz. The race, he just went backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards. He really couldn't put up much of a fight against anybody. And that is a big shame for a driver like George Russell, but 11 out of 20 is his score. And then finally, we come to Nicholas Latifi. Eight. Qualifying was a bit eh, and then the race was even more eh. Under pressure from Mick Schumacher at the very end in the closing stages of the Grand Prix and cracking under said pressure from Mick Schumacher in the closing stages of the Grand Prix. And he ends up with an 8 out of 20 score. And there we go. There are my driver rankings for the Portuguese Grand Prix. Make sure to follow the link in the description down below to submit your predictions. Make sure to remember that uh, 20 out of 20 is the best score possible and 1 out of 20 is the lowest score possible. Please take into consideration both qualifying and the Grand Prix, but it is absolutely up to you how you would like to score each of the drivers. And also let me know in the comments down below what you think of my driver rankings, whether you agree slash disagree, and also where you placed in the predictions scores as well. Please let me know as it is so much fun running this little contest. But that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed and I will catch you in the next episode with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.